Hello, everyone, and welcome to the July 31st Project Jupyter IPython Developers Call. We're following an agenda on Dropbox paper, and we will go ahead and get started with updates on Jupyter Lab. Looks like there was some releases. I see um, notes from various people, so go ahead. Um, I think we'll start with Tim. That way, um, anything Tim doesn't cover can be um, commented on by anyone else who put notes in there. Cool. So we've got uh, most of the packages released for the projects the interns have been working on over the summer. Uh, we have a shortcut UI, so you can change the shortcuts without having to edit the JSON schema, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we also have a cell tagging system that's being implemented. Um, and that package was released yesterday. And then we have a status bar, and I'm not 100% sure if that was released yesterday or if that's getting released today. And then we have an extension for managing Git on your hard drive, and that's supposed to release today or tomorrow. Okay, great. Thanks, Tim. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone else? Uh, yeah, I forgot about it, but we, uh, we did do a new drop of uh, Jupyter Lab fonts, which supports, it's on uh, the DevFeds uh, organization with Tony Fast and myself. Um, so it uses JSS to uh, let you customize the Jupyter Lab theme variables right now as a default, uh, but it can do anything. Uh, it can also embed those fonts directly into the notebook, which is gross. Um, but then it's got an MB convert piece that will actually use those fonts. So kind of halfway building back up to, um, you know, more poster grade, uh, whatever kind of, kind of generation of stuff. Um, and I didn't know about shortcut UI. Um, I got some stuff in a thing that I hacked together that, uh, will also listen for what the active document is. Uh, I mean, it doesn't quite look at what the selector is, but you can use it as a live cheat sheet of what you could be doing, um, which is, is actually really quite nice because you can see the, the things that you don't know about and uh, all that. But I didn't build the actual shortcut builder. So you guys did the other, the 90% the work. Um, I just hooked up the signals. So uh, I will um, submit at that. Yeah, can you, would you mind jumping on a call sometime with the, um the shortcut UI students and seeing if they could maybe work that in um, with what they're working on as well. Oh, sure. Yeah, they can steal. I mean, it's just sometimes it's hard for me to make calls. Uh, okay. But uh, yeah, issue be, uh, I'll, I'll raise the issue and let them know that it's there. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you. Nick, what, what, um, what browsers does JSS, um, the fonts extension support? Everything. Okay. I mean, Does it rely on CSS variables, basically? Oh, uh, yes. It actually injects the CSS variable uh, uh, dependency. I mean, it, it works with the bootstrap stuff by making the bootstrap stuff aware of CSS variables. Okay. Um, so, you know, we could wrap, we could wrap something else and, you know, we could, we could wrap post CSS or something like that in there. Uh, I haven't released the Python side of it yet because it doesn't, it's not good yet. Okay. Cool. Oh yeah, it'd be hot. Okay, and that's it, Nick. <laughs> I take that, that smile means that's it. Um, Just Jessica, do you want to talk about the oh. Open Studio on Saturday? Or oh, yeah. Um, can I, can I mention? Jason will be better to address. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Jason. Um, it's a, it, uh, it's a place and time for people to come together. It's more than just a sprint. It's an open studio. Come bring your own projects if you'd like, or come hack on Jupyter Lab or Jupyter related projects, etc. Um, it is an invite only, but anybody on this call is certainly welcome to come. So please, uh, please email either Paul Ivanov or I for an invite link. Um, and uh, it, it's invite only because uh, we need to keep the attendance within bounds of, of the parameters of the event and the, and the space. Um, right. But 
anybody listening to this, uh, please just email us if you'd like to come. Uh, the office is 140 New Montgomery in San Francisco. And that's this Saturday, Jason? This Saturday, 10 to, I believe, 6. Cool. And lunch is served. I think we'll have something for breakfast, et cetera. Nice. Okay. Um, I'll just mention the 33, uh, 0.33 was released as well. There's a huge change log uh, with lots of issues if you'd like to see it. Um, and uh, a couple of the major changes were uh, we, re we removed the beta label and there's a blog post uh, that Jessica I think is working on uh, to, to explain the rationale more fully. Yep. It's just FYI, uh, the thought was we need to communicate uh, better to users that JupyterLab is ready for use, uh, ready for daily use. And the way we can do that is to remove the beta label, uh, but, but still keep the 0.33 version number to indicate to developers that, uh, that we're still stabilizing the API. I'm done. Okay. Jessica? I think Jessica has more here. Yeah. Um, you're muted, Jessica. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to talk. Uh, yeah, also, um, just as an aside, like, um, um, one of the other things that we did this week was um, we've been um, collaborating with people at uh, uh, LBNL um, on their use of Jupyter Lab. I think they're interested in working on some extensions. So hopefully we'll get to see them on Saturday. Um, so that's, that's another thing we've been working on as well. And then the blog post is coming along as well. All right, I see one more note from Ian. Um, Ian, do you wanna talk more about the binder incident? Sure, so this is related to the uh, 0.33 release. Um, we had an issue where the JupyterLab demo repository was uh, basically, as far as I understand, it was bumping up against the memory limits of the binder pods. And this was causing, they were crashing uh, in a not very useful way and was causing a lot of zombie, pro uh, zombie pods, which basically brought down binder yesterday. Um, mm. So currently the JupyterLab demo uh, repository is banned from binder until we figure out how to prevent offend, pre prevent what was effectually a DDoS on that. Uh, so if anybody's wondering what's going on there, that's what's going on there. If anybody wants to help try to figure out how to get a workaround, that would be very useful. And we did find some mitigations so that <laughs> similar things should cause smaller problems for Binder in the future. Not no problems, but smaller problems. Yeah, but it's really a, I mean, this is a lab problem, you know, the, the fact that, that our, our tools are causing things to fail in a way that users do not find useful, you know, so like on, on JupyterLab demo, you know, can we build the assets offline once and submodule them in or something like that, right? Like, because right. I think part of the problem is just that Webpack was so yeah. hungry really just ate up all the resources and 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 I looked at that list of extensions and none of those were like awful right like it didn't have plotly in there it didn't have uh, Monaco what's that it didn't have Monaco for example it didn't have Monaco you know yeah but it does have Jupyter lab which itself is huge right yeah which is enormous um, yes I mean, you know, total total file size, something like three megs or something like that, but Plotly by itself is two megs, you know? So, like, yeah, can we do more about, Nick, you said if we split the bundle uh, using lazy loading, that helps with the memory consumption? It does, yeah, it does some. Um, and Webpack, we're on four now, right? We're in Webpack four? Right, yeah. So, and it has some memory leaks, so, uh, it's just a thing we gotta we gotta watch out for before we like. I don't think we can go to 1.0 with end users having to have node to get useful things out of their front end. I don't I don't know how we're gonna solve that, but this is just a tiny microcosm of the problems. You know, 
we're very wedded to it now, but we need to either have some convenient pre-rolled PIP or Conda application DERS that that ship like all the blessed good stuff, you know, or something like that. But I, I don't know. Ian, are you sure it was running into the uh, VM memory limits and not the Node.js memory limits that typically we're seeing you have to increase? Uh, I'm not sure. In my testing, that seemed to be the case. When I, when I run uh, a Webpack build on my machine, it typically takes about two gigabytes extra of okay. RAM. And okay. uh, I believe that's the memory limit that's default for these bugs. So that's, that's my it. guess, but it's a guess. <laughs> Man, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You can run the, um, if anybody's interested, um, you can run the builds yourself with repo to Docker and you can give it a memory limit. And so you can just run it on your laptop. Well, that, you, that's interesting. So if repo to Docker- that, uh, Binder runs, if you wanna do some testing. What if repo to Docker became aware of lab extensions? And it, no, it won't. Pardon? It won't do that. Yeah, lab extensions have to be installed after the fact. Yes. Uh, if, however, we, we could do the first bit of thinking about how to manage these extensions more sanely, if you looked at the list of extensions that they asked for, and we could cache those application directories. Um, but anyhow, you know. Yeah, Docker doesn't really let you do that. Let's see, let's see what we can do about trying to build things uh, lazily loaded. It seems like Nick suggested that that cuts down on memory usage if you're creating more JavaScript bundles than just one single massive bundle. Yeah, and I think that's We true. are installing, you know, five or six plugins, I think, for the demo repo. And, you know, I don't know, maybe that will help here. All right, anything else on JupyterLab before we move on? All right, that so sounds like a no. Um, Jason, do you wanna talk about widgets? Uh, we had a 7.3 release. Uh, the major new things were uh, a CSS grid uh, support. So now there's a CSS uh, grid box that lets you take advantage of the CSS grid spec. And uh, we also have a, a few more minor features and a few bug fixes. It's in the change log in the, in the meeting notes, uh, referenced in the meeting notes. And uh, that's about it. All right, so we'll move on to Jupyter Hub updates. Um, Jessica, it looks like you have a note in there. Oh, you mean about the grant? Yeah. Oh yeah, um, we're working on a, uh, grant for um, EWS um, possibly to put together an additional binder deployment. Um, so that, that's something that's currently in the works. All right, and Min, do you wanna talk more about the Littlest Jupyter Hub? Yeah, so something that uh, we've been working on uh, in Jupyter Hub is this Littlest Jupyter Hub distribution for trying to make, uh, make it as simple as possible to deploy Jupyter Hub on a single uh, VM. Um, and it's coming together pretty well and ready for testing if anybody wants to give it a try. Um, probably have the first like 0 0.1 pre-release this week maybe. All right, great. So at this point, um, before we look at um, events, um, just a reminder to repeat the um, releases that are planned or that happened last week, uh, releases for this week and anything that's uh, planned to be released soon at the very bottom of the agenda. And at this point, I'll give a chance for anyone to um, share items that they have for the community or for anyone else on this call um, that hasn't been covered so far in the agenda. Oh, one thing I forgot to throw on the agenda earlier is uh, another team at our location is working on a reactive IPython kernel. Um, so we're playing around with the possibility of that. Um, and that's been pretty exciting. 
Okay. Great. Uh, so don't forget to um, update the notes um, when you get access to your computer again. Will do. Okay. Um, anything, anything else that hasn't been covered yet? Uh, I got a silly demo up. Uh, I don't have the URL right now, sorry. Um, I can't get into GitHub here. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we, there had been, as of like last year, a pretty cool integration of FreeCAD, which is uh, you know, industrial grade 3D CAD package um, with Jupyter and Py3.js. And um, I updated that now that you can install that with Conda. And so it's kind of insane because you can actually just load up a uh, STL or build one parametrically or something like that. And everything is fast enough to be able to like, you know, widgets interact with it and get 3JS stuff out the other end. Uh, I haven't figured out all the material rendering and everything like that because, hey, I'm not that guy. But um, it's, it's pretty impressive and a lot of people have been, been really uh, interested in that as a, you know, there isn't a good end-to-end -end parametric programmable CAD solution today. And I think Jupyter actually has a really good chance of being that lab would be a great place to land a more or less full CAD environment. Um, so anyhow, very exciting stuff coming there, but looking forward to uh, the Pi 3 js that lets me throw NumPy right on my, right on my meshes. Um, Cause I think that's going to be silly fast. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll try and update it at home with the URL for that, that demo. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Um, so reminder um, to the community about JupyterCon. It's coming up at the end of August, coming up quickly now, uh, less, less than 30 days. Um, we also have uh, Jason, I'm not sure if we're ready to um, talk about a possible extension for the community workshops proposals. Um, should I leave that as a uh, stay tuned for an announcement or should I go ahead and share? Um, if it's sure that we're doing it, then let's go ahead and share it. It seemed to me from the email thread yesterday um, that there were no objections. Good. My only, my only concern is that like, it'd be nice to be able to announce Announce them. Maybe we probably, we may not announce it at JupyterCon, but it'd be nice to have the decision done by JupyterCon so that people could uh, coordinate and things like that. So 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 my my only hesitation was maybe given the proposals we have and things like that, uh, we don't extend it quite as far. Did you get a chance to look at those proposals? I did. I didn't get a chance to look at anything. Okay. All right. So um, I would say um, take. Take a look at them and then oh, kind of a crash right now. we don't fails. People expect it. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, so I would say take, take a look at those uh, proposals. If you feel like, because there was a process that happens once, um, you know, where, where a, details and a budget kind of and a more right. thorough event plan gets worked out so right um i would say take a look at those proposals and then let's just decide um as early as possible today and then yep. and then we'll go ahead and announce okay let's just talk right after this yeah i i hear what you're saying that makes sense so um anything else on events or conferences um coming up in the in the community that anyone wants to highlight looks like euro python is just finished thomas had a, a poster about python there um pi bay is the next event pi bay san francisco um august 16th through the 18th is the next one after that but please continue um, adding events to this list including any um events that you see that are looking for speakers. All right, it looks like we've reached the end of the agenda. One last chance for content that wasn't covered before we close out. Okay, doesn't sound like there is any. Have a great rest of your week, everybody.
Will do. Thanks, Anna.